Speedway Report is produced and broadcast by the Zeus Radio Network for Racers Reunion Radio. The New England Auto Racing Hall of Fame honored their 2019 inductees last night up in Connecticut. Brett Hearn, the Jet, makes a big career move. And Matt Williamson may just take the big money title from Matt Hirschman. All this and more coming up. Welcome to Speedwear Report for Monday, November the 11th, 2019. From the shores of Lake Norman in Race City, USA, Mooresville, North Carolina. I'm Patrick Reynolds, and thank you for joining the fastest half hour in racing. As always, a reminder, have you subscribed to our YouTube channel yet? We've got a few more subscribers each week. Just look us up, uh, Speedway Report, on YouTube. You'll find us as the subscription. Guys, just keep going up. Thanks for joining us and getting us deposited right into your mailbox. Because I know watching live isn't always the thing to do anymore. And on this 11-11, we want to say a big salute to all the veterans out there, both past and present. We salute them after every show as we close today, Veterans Day. All that have served, thank you. The reason we do this show and have the freedoms we do in the United States is because of the, those who have enlisted, all those who have passed. Thank you all uh, for being with us tonight. Hope you enjoy the show. Let's go to the victory lane lap as we get a little bit thin as November marches on with the winds. Kind of like... Love that enthusiasm when we get to March and April and this thing's about to pop. Well, it's getting a little thinner, but that's okay. Uh, the thinner the races, the bigger the consequences. And we've got some big ones coming up. NASCAR's Monster Energy Cup Tour led off a quadruple header for NASCAR in Phoenix, Arizona. Let's begin uh, with yesterday's 500 kilometers, which was won by Denny Hamlin. Locked him into the final four coming up at Miami this weekend. Xfinity Series raced 200 miles on Saturday, won by Justin Allgaier. And Stewie Friesen won Friday night at the truck race in Phoenix. Always good to see a former modified guy make good in the big leagues. Stewie is going for a truck championship this Friday in Miami. NASCAR's Pro Series West was also racing at Phoenix. Ty Gibbs won the race. Derek Krauss won the wars. Derek Krauss is your 2019 West Series champion. World of Outlaw Late Models, World of Outlaw Sprints, and the Dirt Car, Big Block Modified, graced the high banks of the little dirt track at Charlotte Motor Speedway this weekend. One of the biggest short track races that we have around here all year. I argue it's in the top 10 for the biggest short track races in the entire country all year. World of Outlaw Late Models got things going on Friday night where your winner was Chris Madden, and Saturday night's feature was taken by Jimmy Owens. Brandon Shepard in the House Rocket Car is the champion for the Late Models in 2019. World of Outlaw Sprints were won by David Gravel both nights. He took the checkers Friday and Saturday. Nice sweep for the Knoxville Nationals winner, but Brad Sweet is the champion of the series. First time in the last five years that Donnie Schatz was not the sprint car champ. And in the big block modifieds, Jimmy Phelps won the 40-lap feature on Friday night while Billy Decker claimed Saturday's main event. Matt Williamson, the champ for the big block mods. Lots to talk about with Matty. Uh, we'll get to him in a little bit. A little bit. Uh, also sticking with the dirt, the USAC sprints were out west at Paris, California. They made a three-night stand Thursday and Friday nights, won by Brady Bacon, and Saturday night, won by C.J. Leary. And the race for the pavement modifieds, the North-South Shootout, this year staged in Hickory, North Carolina. Burt Myers was your winner of that annual event. Yeah, we're going to talk a little North-South here in, uh, shortly as well. Maybe we'll just kick off our discussions. I touched on this last week. I uh, didn't get into it too deeply because Roger Penske bought everything under the sun, so we talked a little bit about that. This week, Penske didn't purchase the world or the universe, so we get to talk about short track racing a little bit. We just passed World of Outlaw Finals weekend, which is take place in Concord, North Carolina, uh, just across the street from the one-and-a-half-mile super speedway. It's a four-tenths-mile dirt track. has some great racing there throughout the year, and one of the biggest weekends is the World of Outlaw World Finals with the sprints, the late models, and the modifieds joined to end their seasons. 
about an hour or so up the road in Hickory, North Carolina, right on top of it is the North-South Shootout for Pavement Modifieds. The Pavement Modified race was put together uh, years ago. About, what are we in, 17, 18 years we've had this thing? And it was a great idea to begin with, but has just fallen, uh, stumbled a little bit. Still a good race, still a good event. But so many times on the calendar, this thing has landed right on top of the World of Outlaws uh, weekend. The North-South Shootout will never will always lose fans to the to the world of outlaws. They've got a 14, 15,000 seat uh, grandstand at the dirt track, and it's sold out every year. Hickory Motor Speedway, the days of packing in those 15,000 uh, seat crowds for those for the Bush Grand National races are long gone, and the modifieds and late models and support classes go up there for the North South Source Shootout. A good event. I like it, but there's no competing, and they always lose to the world of outlaws badly. It shouldn't be a competition against each other, but I have no earthly reason why the North-South shootout should be right on top of world of outlaws. Um, I believe Jared Echo did make the trip from Hickory, North Carolina, down to the dirt track following the North-South shootout, and he made the sprint car feature and late model feature. But Jared comes from old school. Kind of like me when I used to go race chasing in my 20s. Who does this anymore? I seriously doubt I could or would. It's a tough sled and up and down the highway, hammer down. I, I've, I've been there. I've done that. I don't do it much anymore. Not that I wouldn't, but goodness. Jared, God bless you, man, that you made the, a couple of features at the dirt track uh, after being at Hickory in the afternoon and in the early evening. I didn't, uh, I, I'm, not, I'm not doing this. I used to do this anymore. Not for me. Very few people do. Usually most people choose one or the other. And the bigger event, let's call it what it is. I grew up on pavement modifieds, but these guys cannot compete with the world of outlaws when it comes to uh, a date head-to-head. I don't know why this North shootout just hasn't moved another week. The, uh, the World of Outlaws got to juggle the schedules of all three national touring series and puts them at the end of the year right here in Charlotte. That's fine. This North-South shootout is always in the fall. It can flex into November, uh, later in November, earlier in October. It can be done. There's no reason in the world why it should land where it is. Now, Burt Myers did win the pavement race. Uh, he got criticized for it. Why? Because of the weak field. Only 28 modified show up. On the surface, not a bad deal with 28 cars. <clears throat> if you compare that to a lot of the Southern Modified Racing Series events, it's quite the healthy field. It's two to three times the car count that they normally get, but Bert was taking a task on the internet by the you know the keyboard muscle guys, the tough guys online, and social media that said, well, he won because nobody was there. Well, it didn't have a stellar Wayland Modified Tour field, no, but it had Tim Brown. It had Matt Hirschman. It had Andy Sice. There was some good guys there. There was probably a 12, I want to say 10 to 12 cars that I would put is same competitive nature as Burt Myers. And it was still a good field. It wasn't a Hall of Fame modified class field. No. You know, there's there's no Justin Bonsignor. There's no Doug Kobe. I get all that. But it was still a good win for Myers, and uh, I wouldn't criticize the field too much. Some people did. There's nobody there. Nobody showed up. So many uncompetitive cars, blah, blah, blah. There were some good cars there. There were. It wasn't a top-to-bottom field. Uh, The North-South Shootout does not have the cachet that it once did, but it could, starting by taking it off World of Outlaws weekend. Hickory's always a good track for Modifieds. Uh, wears out the tires, one third of a mile, <clears throat> got some banking to it. I dig it. It's one of the better tracks for modifieds that always puts on good racing, but goodness gracious people, the Hackett's please move this thing off of outlaws weekend in 2020. Well, as I talked to you live on Monday, a Monday evening, the new England auto racing hall of fame held their banquet last night. And is always in November. The group of uh, folks from, well, my home home region of the country. North Carolina is home now, but I grew up in Connecticut, so I'm connected to the New England area. Uh, always, you know, 
reminded and hold roots there. And, uh, my heart's there with so many pieces of racing history that I grew up on. And going into the Hall of Fame last night, we begin with Mike Joy, uh, national broadcast legend. He anchors and is the color man for Fox uh, Sports now. But I remember many a time when he was on the mic at a uh, Friday night at Stafford, a Saturday night at Riverside Park calling the modified action and he moved up through the ranks through MRN and into television and uh, has been hosting Fox since they became the first part of the season NASCAR broadcaster in 2001. He's been the anchorman. Ed Flemke Jr., a uh, modified tour driver, chassis builder. Goodness gracious, I was a fan of his dad's. Used to watch his dad race when Junior was just a kid coming up through the ranks. Well, Junior had a pretty good career himself in modifieds and SK racing. He went into the Hall of Fame last night. Wayne Dion, I don't think there's a division in New England that Wayne Dion has not won in fendered or open wheels. Vinny Anarumo, ah, I love the Italians at Seacock Speedway. Uh, Vinny's a seven-time champion at the Concrete Palace. The Conk, well-deserved going in. Jack Doyle, a big drag racer up in New England. Brad LaFontaine, I don't know how many modified crew chief, modified championships he's got as a crew chief. It's plenty. He's a fabricator. He's got uh, Northy, or, uh, the parts business up there. I was about to say Northeast Speed, which was something totally different. That's not his gig. Uh, Rick Mariscal, uh, Founder of the uh, Pro 9 Motorsports Museum in Rhode Island, Bob Weber Sr., owner of Star and Hudson Speedways. Congratulations, guys. Uh, all you guys put together your efforts and you made racing possible from what I saw as a kid. All of you had a piece of it. And uh, our good friend Bones Bossier was there last night. He is That is one of his favorite weekends of the year is to go in for the New England Auto Racing Hall of Fame Awards. Every November, uh, they go in. On, it's usually on a Sunday night. They go in. I've never been. I should go some year. That's just too much history. Too much history. I heard a little bit. Uh, Carl Fredrickson, the publisher of Speedway Illustrated Magazine, was there last night. And he talked about uh, just the guys looking good and representing short track racing well. Some of them, not the young spry whippersnappers that used to beat up on uh, the short trackers every weekend up in New England, uh, but it's good to see everybody. And I, you know, with this show, a Speedway Report having its roots in Racers Reunion, this is where we started paying homage and respecting the history of the sport. And uh, when you tip your hat to the guys in New England where I grew up, means a, uh, a lot of uh, sentimental value there to me. And I know a lot of our audience is from the New England modified respectful area. And thanks for joining in tonight. If you got a story about any of these guys, we're live on Facebook. So if you want to throw it in the comments or if you're catching us, you know, on YouTube or some form of social media later, always toss it in there. I get them eventually. They find their way to me. But if you got a good... Uh, Say you got a good Ed Flemke Jr. story or a good Mike Joy story. Man, I would love to hear it. Go ahead and type it up. Uh, I want to hear what you have to say. Getting to current news, not the historical uh, type that we covered here a little bit, but uh, some of the on-track action is really, gosh, news hit me like a ton of bricks. I knew it was coming. So eventually, this was going to come. But Brett Hearn will be semi-retired in 2020. He is taking over a position of director of motorsports for the Orange County Fair Speedway in Middletown, New York. And he will run in a limited number of races next year. They're saying about 10 of the features that he will run in. And Hearn, 61 years old, Still winning, just won his 16th Big Black Modified Championship at the Orange County Fair Speedway this season. And at 61, I asked myself, how much longer is he going to go? Just last year, a year ago, as a matter of fact, to the day, uh, I watched him win a feature at the Charlotte Dirk Track during the World of Outlaws weekend. Uh, he does not have quite the step that he used to, as opposed to being a guaranteed winner or top five guy. He is still capable of winning, but I often on the tour races, I see him as a maybe a 6th to 10th place guy. 
like I talk about with Brett Hearn, I think about so many guys that I, I hope guys like that, like Brett Hearn, and he is, he's doing this, go out like Jeff Gordon did, where you're still competitive and could still win. Do not, please don't anybody go out who's a big winner and a legend in their division like Daryl Waltrip or Richard Petty. Both of these guys, Hall of Famers, both of these guys I have a tremendous amount of respect for. But when you look at their body of work across the, their entire career, it is fantastic. It is stellar. The last several years that both of those gentlemen were behind the wheel of a race car was sadly embarrassing and not a good example of what they did throughout their career and how they should be remembered. They're two Hall of Famers. You look at the short track guys, uh, Brett Hearn being one of them, don't keep running till you are uncompetitive and not qualifying for features. Good for him. Uh, he can do a lot for the Orange County uh, Fair Speedway. He knows that place, you know, that old expression like the back of your hand. I challenge anybody who knows that place better than Brett Hearn does. Uh, he's going to be a big, big help to Chris Larson. Larson's got the, got the checkbook, got the money. He's putting funding into that place and bringing it back to life bring Hearn in with his ideas on racing on how to make it the best possible show that you can. My goodness, Orange County Fair Speedway just might be back on track to be the stuff that it used to be in the glory days. Wouldn't that be something at the, with Brett Hearn, uh, with his hand on the tiller, that would be pretty spectacular. Now, currently he just crowned the champion this past weekend it was Matt Williamson who won the uh, dirt car championship for big black modifieds. He is interesting stat here. The first Canadian to ever win the big black modified super dirt car series championship. This shocked me as I was talking with uh, Mike Slattery earlier today and Slattery said, if you asked me that question, it would have gotten it wrong. I said, me too. I would have thought it's somewhere since the series started. Remember back in the old CRC Chemicals tour, back in the, what was it, the late 70s, when we started doing this midweek racing and this tour, you know, the Syracuse qualifiers. Somewhere along the way, some Canadian must have won the championship. Yes, 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 no. Matt Williamson in 2019 is the first Canadian to win the Super Dirt Car Series title. Now, just... Three races that were plucking off the calendar for this guy. Williamson won the one hundred thousand dollars at Orange County Fair Speedway at their centennial race in August. He won the big block modified race at Super Dirt Week on Oswego. There's another fifty grand. And the championship he just won over the weekend here in Charlotte was another fifty thousand dollars. So that's two hundred thousand dollars that he won in just three races that he earned. I don't know how many other races he, he ran and competed in all year, but it was obviously plenty. I'm wondering what the entire cash taken uh, for Matt is, which goes, raises the question, is Matt Williamson now big money Matt as opposed to big money Matt Hirschman, who usually cleans up when the pavement modified checkbook is open and there is big cash to be found. NASCAR's final four in Cup, Xfinity, and Trucks goes into Miami Homestead this weekend. I'm going to proudly call it Phony Championship Weekend. NASCAR keeps shooting itself in the foot with this stuff. I am just not a fan. I'm just not a fan. I can't get over it. Year after year, I complain. I'm a Latford system guy. We just talked about championships in dirt racing. You start counting points at the start of the season and you finish at the end of the season. It's that simple. How many weeks do I go here without complaining about NASCAR's playoffs? Not too many, just about every week. Well, we're going to settle these championships, and I'll use air quotes as championships, this weekend, and I just cannot, I can't get into it. I can't get over it. I'm not interested. My excitement is, is crashing as I talk on this show. Uh, I'm going to move on to other things. Yeah, it's just, I mean, we'll talk about it next week, but if you think I'm a big excited about this four-way phony title tie, I just, sorry, can't get it, can't get used to it, still have not and, and will not. We do want to pay our respects. We talked about the uh, veterans earlier. Thank you guys and gals for all you have done for, the, for our country in the United States. We lost some major people in the last week. 
Randy Sweet has passed away. He is the founder of Sweet Manufacturing and a Hall of Famer in the Michigan Short Tracks. We all know the Sweet Steering, the Sweet Pumps, the Sweet Racks. Randy Sweet, uh, no longer with us. Rest in peace, Randy. Uh, Indy 500 engine builder, Louis Meyer Jr., passed away on Saturday in Crawfordville, Indiana. Now, his dad was Louis Meyer, who we all know. He got the milk tradition started after he won the Indianapolis 500 in 1936. His son, nicknamed Sonny, uh, Louis Meyer Jr., passed away this past Saturday at the age of 89. And I didn't know this last gentleman, but Tim George out of Austin, Texas, died in Sebring over the weekend uh, competing there to, from a medical complication. He, something happened in the car. He was able to pull into the pit road got medical attention there, was transported to the hospital, and unfortunately we lost uh, Tim George, sports car driver out of Texas, uh, passing away over the weekend uh, at Sebring. Gentlemen, rest in peace. We talked a lot about history tonight and who paved the way, paved the road for those that are here now as you know, we conclude the season in 2019, all the generations before us. This is a wonderful sport. And it's terrible to lose people, especially those that made stuff happen and created so much that we see today. A tip of the hat to Dave to Spain and Motor Week Illustrated's Racer of the Week. We award the Speedway Report Racer of the Week each and every week. And with all the accomplishments that happened on the track, I just talked about them a few minutes ago. I'm going to give our Racer of the Week on November 11th win to Matt Williamson, the first Canadian to ever win the Super Dirt Car Series Championship for the Big Block Modifieds. In between our broadcasts, catch up on the world of racing with our website, speedwayreport.com. We've got all our podcasts uploaded there, including some articles to read. Rhonda Beck has been very uh, strongly typing and coming up with some good material recently. I saw her at Millbridge Speedway here in North Carolina last week. She was sitting there in a very, very chilly night watching some dirt racing, Looking good, feeling good, and uh, maybe she'll come up with a new column about Millbridge Speedway. That would be cup. Anything that she writes, pretty much I'll post. She's a good writer. She enjoys short track racing, and that to me is what the sport is all about. Let's connect on social media. Hit me up on Facebook on the Speedway Report with Patrick Reynolds page or on Racers Reunion. I am on Twitter at Speedway Report and at Speedway Pat. Go to the forum at racersreunion.com, and all our shows are there. And like I said at the top of the show, subscribe to our uh, YouTube channel. Big thanks to everyone on the Facebook Live feed that joined in on the show tonight. And I want to thank all of the military, past and present, for the freedoms we enjoy as Americans in our daily life, including the simple things like bench racing right here on a Monday night. Freedom is not free, and a veteran paid that bill for us. To all of the men and women who are defending freedom and watching Speedway Report on this Veterans Day 2019, you take care of yourselves and come home soon. A special salute to the teachers, school staff, firefighters, police officers, and paramedics in our own communities. They are quiet and modest heroes every single day. God bless and thank you. You have been watching Speedway Report from the shores of Lake Norman, in Race City, USA, Mooresville, North Carolina. Please like our Facebook page, Speedway Report with Patrick Reynolds, and follow me on Twitter at Speedway Pat. Now, on Facebook, if you're watching us live, head on over to the Drag Racing List page. Coming up next is Drag List Live. Bill, John, and Barb got you covered at the top of the hour. We will be back here on Facebook Next week, Monday, November the 18th, we will look at NASCAR Championship Weekend in Miami, the NHRA Finals in Pomona, and the Myrtle Beach 400. Thank you all for watching. I'll see everybody next week.